here is the opinions and thoughts of Virgil Hill and Tommy Hearns. To a major headline bout in Las Vegas has been a long one for Virgil Hill. He has been running down the dream of glory on a night when the sports world would focus in on him and a marquee opponent in a Las Vegas super fight. And finally, he's chased the dream down. But the run to glory began not in Las Vegas, but in North Dakota, the home for Virgil Hill. It is where he is trained, where he's fought, where he's grown into a hero, because it is where Virgil Hill began. And from those beginnings, he became an Olympian in the Los Angeles Games of 1984, where he won a silver medal and became a hero to the fans in his native state. It was an idol level in sports that there perhaps was only reached by Roger Maris. I've just had a lot of support. You know, there are no major sports franchises up there, so, uh, you know, they kind of follow me very, very closely. And there has been no letting down of his fans. Most of his 10 title defenses have been in North Dakota, delighting his home staters with speed, boxing ability, and enough punch to build up this impressive resume. But there's one thing missing on the boxing record of Virgil Hill, a win over a certifiable superstar in a million dollar payday. With an opponent like Thomas Hearns, he now gets the chance, which is why this training regimen has been so important. Hill considers himself a modern fighter who favors the modern techniques of training. And while not accepted by all in the boxing game, Hill uses high-tech training and believes that in a war of attrition with Thomas Hearns on a hot desert night, that high-tech training could be all the difference in the world. I'm June 3rd, I'll be ready, I promise. Keith Clevin, the guy that I work with, my physical therapist and strengthening coach and conditioning coach and stuff, um, has done extensive studies on boxers and stuff. I mean, he has workouts particularly for boxing, you know, for boxers and stuff. And he's trained, you know, a lot of good fighters, you know, starting out with Larry Holmes. So, you know, he, you know Larry was kind of like the guinea pig, so to speak. So, um, you know, he's done extensive studies on that. And, uh, you know, we found where, you know, it's, it's not important to be in the gym taking the pounding and the, you know, the, the physical part of, uh, of boxing all the time because, you know, but boxers' careers are very, very short. So then, you know, the, that one punch that you don't take uh, in the gym may make the difference. And now all of his work, training, and dreams lead directly to the hitman. And Virgil is ready for the fight of his life. I'm a fighter that, you know, faced with, uh, you know, a good opponent and someone that, you know, wants to come to win. And I rise to the occasion. And so I think they'll see the best of Virgil Hill come June 3rd, definitely. Tommy's starting to loosen up now. Oh, there it is. With the left cross. A solid left hand to the jaw. And whether or not Morton can get up, I don't know. <laughs> This is a true warrior, a man who has always come to fight, a man who has always prepared well, respected his profession, and given it an honest effort. This is Thomas Hearns, the hitman, a boxer and a puncher, the pride of Detroit, as closely identified with the Motor City as the Pistons, the Detroit Lions, and yes, the great Joe Lewis himself. He was the undefeated assassin who destroyed Pepino Cuevas in two rounds to win the world welterweight title, considered invincible by many till that fateful summer night in 1981 when Sugar Ray Leonard handed him his first defeat in a magnificent exhibition by both. Hearns rebounded from that defeat to go on to a long and memorable career, resulting in five world titles. His record speaks for itself. I think that if you want to accomplish something, whatever it may be, if you have a job or you have a certain thing on your mind that you want to accomplish, it, it takes a certain amount of work. If you're not willing to put that amount of hours and a, a amount of work into it, then you cannot receive it because it's, it's not going to come just so easy for you. you got to work for what you want. And what Thomas Hearns wants is another title, world championship number six. And now, 10 years after meeting Sugar Ray Leonard at Caesars Palace, he again has put in the months of work necessary, including a tune-up bout, a KO win over Kemper Morton to get ready for Virgil Hill.
Virgil Hill is the last guy uh, that's in my weight class that I must defeat in order to win the title. And plus, I think that he's been asking for me. And he's going he's gonna to receive Thomas Hearn, but he's not going to like what he's going to get from Thomas Hearn. Hearns has earned his fame and fortune in a glorious boxing career, but learned a new and different kind of satisfaction last winter when he traveled to the Middle East, the first American athlete to visit the troops readying for the Persian Gulf War. Hearns was a huge hit. None other than General Storman Norman Schwarzkopf made Hearns an honorary general. After two weeks of give and take with the soldiers, it was clear that Thomas was touched, touched deep inside. To meet those people and knowing that Every one of those brave soldiers knew who I was. It was just a big thrill. Now the war is over, and Thomas Hearns had to ready himself for his type of fighting in the desert. Now, however, it is with a new trainer, Alex Shearer, who has replaced Emmanuel Stewart. Only a few new wrinkles, though. Hearns believes that fundamentals went. When you learn how to box, they teach you the basic step, the basic step, the basic jab, the basic right hand. Um, they don't teach you to, to, to start off with trying to get fast and shoot a uh, quick, fast shot. So, like, they don't teach you that. You got to go and rely on the basic, just the jab and the one-two. Could a sixth title be on the horizon for Hearns? Virgil Hill stands in his way, but if he's successful, it's the history books and that long sought after respect. I think that my place in history is definitely a sure, uh, but I think that having the recognition from being uh, the first man in history to win five world titles, I haven't yet received that yet. Um, people know me as being the first man in history uh, to win five world titles, but to get that, I mean, I guess that big fame, that big glory, uh, that big, big reception, I haven't yet received that yet.